Good morning. So line breaking, taking text and wrapping it in lines. How hard could this be? CSS has a number of interestingly named properties and keywords, and it may not be completely obvious how this is all fitting together. Believe it or not, there is a system behind this, and I'm going to try and help you make sense of that. I'm Florian. This is Twitter. This is where the slides are. Let's dive in. At the core of line breaking, we have the white space property. Everything revolves around that. It has these number of values. And what can you do with these? You can decide if a sequence of spaces, which are in your markup, are going to get collapsed down to one, or if they are going to stay as a sequence. Similarly, you can decide if tab characters and line feed characters are, doing, are going to stay as that, or if they're going to be converted to spaces. You can also decide if the lines are going to be allowed to wrap at all or not. An interesting little quirk within this is when you have spaces that stay at the end of a line, what happens to them? This is also under the control of the white space property. And an interesting thing about this property that I think is often overlooked is that this does not just apply to block elements, divs, paragraph, and things like that. It applies to any element. You can use it on spans, you can use it on the B tag, on the I tag, on the M tag, and change within a block how the white space and line breaking is handled for elements within that context. But let's dive in. Starting with things that are simple, white space normal. Here we have a very simple bit of markup, a paragraph with text in it. Uh, this is source code. I have indented my second line, actually in this case with spaces. I've put a few colors here so that we can see what we're doing. Uh, so we have space between words. Here actually people like, sometimes like to type two spaces at the end of the sentence, line feeds, indentation, a forced break. Okay, let's linearize this a little bit to think about how the browser would see it. Um, now, what do we go from there? Well, the first thing that white space normal does is take the spaces that were after the line feed and get rid of it. Next thing is take the line feeds and turn them into space, spaces. Then we move on and we take the sequence of spaces and collapse them down to one. On top of that, after every space that is there, we add a wrapping opportunity, a place where the line will be allowed to wrap. OK, let's get some lines. You put a word, you put a space, you put a word, you put a space, you keep going. OK, we're at the end of the line. Now we're supposed to have an extra space, but we're already at the end of the line, so drop it, go to the next line. The next thing is a forced line break. So you force a line break. You put the word, we have a space at the end of the line, drop it, we're done. Nothing surprising here, but it's okay because this is white space normal, so it's pretty normal. So in summary, tabs get turned into spaces. Line, uh, spaces around a line feed disappear. Line feeds themselves turn into spaces, a sequence of space a sequence of spaces turned into a single one with a wrap opportunity after it. And if you had wrapping opportunities in the middle of your string for some reason, they stay in. The second value of white space is no wrap. It does almost the same thing, except it gets rid of the wrapping opportunities. They were here, here uh, with normal, they're gone with no wrap. So you can't wrap. A third one, which is still pretty close, is line, white space pre-line. Again, this is pretty similar, but in this case, the line feeds are going to stay in and turn into forced breaks. And if you had wrapping opportunities, they stay. Now, the next one is actually fairly different. If you had tabs in your markup, you will have tabs in your layout. If you had spaces around your line feeds, you will have spaces. Your line feeds will stay in as forced breaks. You had a series of spaces, you keep the series of spaces. And there, if there was wrapping opportunities, they're gone. 
you s your layout will be exactly the same as your markup. The next one is similar, but a little bit different. The difference being that the existing wrapping opportunities in your markup stay, and if you have a series of spaces, at the end of it, you're allowed to wrap. Similar but different, break spaces. The only difference is that if you have a series of spaces, you can break between them as well, not just at the end. So there you have it, white space. But there is a phase two. Now this was talking in theory about the, the text before you wrap it into lines. Now you continue and sh actually go wrap it into the lines. If, you had, ha if you're at the beginning of a line and you have one of these collapsible space, it disappears. If you have preserved tabs, which only happen with the last three values, then it pushes you to the next tab stop. If you have forced breaks, then you are forced to break and you go to the next line. And if you do have a wrapping opportunity and your line is full, then you're allowed to continue into the next line. The end of lines is a little bit of a special place. What happens to the spaces of a, at an end of the line? Well, on the one hand, you may think, I don't care, I can't see them. Most of the time this is true. Some of the time it's not. Um, let's say you have put a background on your span. You will see it when there are spaces. If you have underlined your text, you will underline the white space as well. If you're selecting the text, you will see the selection. And so it may matter what has happened to the spaces that you have at the end of the line. Well, the collapsible ones are gone, they're removed. You can't see them anymore. The type of white space that is preserved with white space pre, they stay there. And if you have a lot of them, they overflow into the padding, the border, the margin, whatever it is you have after that, they all stay there. If you have white space pre-wrap, it's kind of similar, they also all stay there, but depending on the browser, they will either overflow to infinity or stay there until the edge of the element and get trimmed after that. There currently is no interrupt on that. White space break spaces, these ones don't disappear either, but if you don't have room to keep all of them in the line, the ones that don't fit go to the next line because we have a wrapping opportunity between them. So earlier I said we can use white space on all elements, not just blocks. Here's a very basic example. Have this simple piece of markup. White space is normal, as is the default. And so you get this, which is fairly unsurprising. But maybe, maybe this is not what you want here. Like the word white space in my example here is a programming keyword. Maybe it'd be nicer if it stick with itself, that we didn't have a line break in the middle of it. So I will add white space no wrap on the code element, and then the wrapping opportunity that was built in into the hyphen. Hyphens have a wrapping opportunity after them. It is suppressed by white space no wrap. And since I can do it only on an inline element, this, this works out to what I wanted to do in this case. Okay, here's another example. Let's do poetry. Uh, in poetry, line breaks are relevant. They're intentional. They're not just an accident of how you, source, you format your source code. Uh, but tabs are. I mean, I have a tab at the beginning of the line here just because I indent my code. And so white space preline will do what I want here. It will collapse the spaces and get rid of the tabs and all of that, let the lines wrap if there's not enough room, but preserve the line breaks that I put in the source code. So if you have long lines, it looks like this. If you have short lines, it looks like that. The tab is gone, that's all what I wanted. And on this same markup, if you're, say, on a different medium, you can switch to um, a different value of white space, and now the entire thing doesn't wrap. Maybe this is a little bit rare, so let's look at some more common situations. Editing. Your user may be typing text, maybe in a text area, Maybe you're using content editable to make your document modifiable. What now? If you're on white space normal and the sequences of space in your markup collapse with each other, it's a very confusing editing experience. You press the space bar repeatedly and they get collapsed together and you only see one. This is not good. 
to try and avoid that, uh, browsers have various heuristics to try and mix space, uh, spaces and non-breaking spaces when you press the spacebar in editable areas that have white space normal. This is a hack to make things not disappear. It works kind of poorly, but a little bit. Uh, but we should do better. And to do better on, on elements that are editable by default in the browser, the browser's built-in style sheet will put white space pre-wrap on them so that your sequences of spaces stay. Uh, this is pretty nice, but if you have turned uh, an element into being editable yourself using something like content editable, uh, this doesn't happen for you and you probably want to do it. Maybe you want to use break spaces. Browsers use pre-wrap because that's the historical value, uh, but it's not very nice that when you reach the end of the line, you keep pressing spaces and depending on the browser, maybe you'll see all of them, maybe you will only see them until the edge of the element and after that they disappear. And so break space may be a better, a better choice here. Okay, so this is white space. We wrap the lines or not, depending on how much space we have, what's the content, etc. But what do we do if things don't fit? Here comes the overflow wrap property to let you know whether or not and how you should wrap when things would otherwise overflow. This only does anything if you have picked one of the values of the white space property that allows wrapping in the first place. If you've disallowed it, nothing will wrap anyway. But if you have allowed wrapping, we can control what happens in case of overflows with this. Like the white space property, this can be controlled on any element, not just blocks. So go in line, go tweak the details depending on what your content is. So, thing, simple thing here. We have lines again, let's fill them. This fits, this doesn't. It's okay, there is a wrapping opportunity before it. So let's wrap, put some more words. The SHA doesn't fit. It's okay, we have a wrapping opportunity before it. We wrap and, oops, it still doesn't fit. Now what? Well, if overflow wrap is normal, this is where we stop. We have overflow and it stays there. But overflow wrap anywhere does exactly what it says. If you would over overflow, then wrap anywhere. It is not necessarily perfect for the based on what the meaning of the content is, but at least you get no overflow. There is another value of the over overflow wrap property that does almost exactly the same thing as overflow wrap anywhere. Uh, it's overflow wrap break word. In the example I just showed, it would have done exactly the same thing. But let's look at this. Um, as Rachel just told us, things have a minimal and a maximal uh, size. And if you have table layout, it doesn't matter that I said table with, uh, the, with this five characters here, because table cells can never get smaller than the minimum size of the things inside them. And in this case, I have a compact string of nine digits, so it can't shrink below nine. If it can't shrink below nine, it can't overflow. And overflow wrap only does anything when things overflow. So you might have thought this might have wrapped after digit five, but it doesn't because it doesn't overflow. So it doesn't get a chance to apply. Overflow wrap anywhere changes the minimal size of things because it knows that it can wrap anywhere in case of overflow. It will consider its minimal size to be one. And so I've asked for five, five is bigger than one. I get a five character white cell. And with that string, which naively does not have wrapping opportunity, after five characters, it would overflow. And now overflow wrap can apply. And it does, and we wrap the line. So this is the nuance between overflow wrap anywhere and break word. Maybe you don't use table for layout all that often, although you may use it for data. But the, as Rachel told us, the concepts of min and max size applies in grid and in flexbox in different ways. And depending on what you're doing, you may want the minimum size to stay the largest word. Or maybe you want it to take into account that the fact that you have an emergency system for dealing with overflow. Pick between break word and anywhere based on that. Okay, 
but so far, we've been mostly taking the wrapping opportunities in the content for granted. How do, we, how do we get more of them? How do we get fewer of them? Where do they come from? Uh, first way to get more wrapping points is hyphenation. So there is a hyphens property. Uh, it lets you wrap the line in the middle of words, and where, at the points where it does that, it inserts a hyphen. This too only does anything if you have chosen one of the values of the white space property that allows for wrapping in the first place. And as previously discussed, this also works on any element, not just blocks. So how do we use it? Well, by default, it's turned on. The hyphen's uh, initial value is manual. And so you need to manually place hyphenation points in your markup using the soft hyphen shy HTML, HTML entity. So you sprinkle that in your markup at places where you think hyphenation is acceptable. And if you have a long line, it fits, you don't wrap. If your line gets shorter, you get what you would expect. This is very nice, but writing your entire page with explicit soft hyphenation markers is very, very tedious, and you would not want to do that most of the time. And so you want hyphens auto, and let the browser do that for you. But this will only work if you specify the language of your content using the HTML lang attribute. Because hyphenation in Dutch and French and German and Japanese behaves differently, and the browser needs to know what you're doing. Let's, let's look at this a little bit more. Assume you were to sprinkle hyphenation anywhere or randomly. You would get things like this, and this is very, very hard to read. This is not an improvement. So you don't want the browser to do random things. You want the browser to use a dictionary to know where in words it is okay to wrap the line, to hyphenate. And browsers have that. They have an English dictionary of where it is okay in English to hyphenate. They have one for German, they have one for Czech, they have one for many languages you want to wish for. But then you need to tell them what language that is. And that's what auto is for. And to avoid this ugly example, if you don't specify the language, even if you ask for auto hyphenation, the browsers will not do anything because they can't do the right thing. So use lang. It's good for you. Um, another one. Word break normal. It lets you know if you're allowed to break within the word. What is that? Well, let's see. Uh, if you say you can break, so it, le it lets you discuss whether you can break between the letters of the word. If you say break all, break between any of the letters, this actually takes precedence over hyphenation. So if you turn both of them on, you will not see any hyphen. And break all, which lets you break anywhere. Uh, this too only works if you can wrap. And this too works on any element. So, OK, what is this? English wraps after spaces in its normal way. Japanese does not have spaces, so it needs to do something else. When you wrap Japanese normally, you wrap between any letter. And so the normal behavior of English is to keep all the letters together. The normal behavior of Japanese is to break all the letters apart. Korean used to be like Japanese, but nowadays it's usually written with spaces. Nevertheless, it is allowed to break all the letters apart. Except some authors think this is silly, and now that we have spaces, we should keep all the letters of a word together and do something more like English. Well, by flipping between the break all or keep all or the normal value, you can change between that. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, Koreans are a minority today in this audience, so what else can we do with this? Well, let's say you're writing a travel guide. Word break is normal by default, so English will do its thing and Japanese will do its thing, and it's fine. But this is a travel guide. People will be carrying the book in the street, looking at signs and comparing, and you have a line break in the middle of a language you can't read. That may make the comparison harder. What if we say, no, 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 I don't care what Japanese normally do. I want to keep all the letters together. And then you do, and then it works. Uh, 
CJK up here means Chinese, Japanese, Korean. The other way around. Uh, in Japanese, normally, you break between every letter, but for Latin letters, you don't. Here is just two lines, but on a large piece of text, all the right edge of the lines would line up because you can put one character one by one and it's all lined up, except this one line because there's some Latin text in the middle. Maybe we don't want to do the normal thing for Latin text here. We want to break all just like Japanese does. And then things line up. So this is mostly what the word break property is about. Either you accept what is normal for everything or you want to specialize. Do I want to keep all the things together? Do I want to break all? So here's another one. This one is a little bit tricky. It's a bit confusing because it has a very generic sounding name. Line break, that sounds like it should be a very useful thing when right? you're doing line breaking. Actually, it is very, very specialized. This property is mostly, again, about Chinese, Japanese, and Korean line breaking. It does other things. Uh, it has a break anywhere mode. It's a little bit newer. Uh, if you say line break anywhere, it will allow breaking absolutely ever, anywhere. Oh, let me go back actually a little bit. If you look at the Japanese example here, there is not a break between absolutely everything. There is one missing between this character and the comma after it. Uh, because break all, what break, break all is for letters within a word. Punctuation is not part of that. So word break, break all, breaks all the things within a word, but it doesn't break everything. Line break anywhere does. Absolutely everything. Between any character, now you can wrap. Uh, but this is, again, mostly about Chinese, Japanese, and Korean punctuation. Uh, and so to do the right thing for the right language, this one will also only work fine if you use the language attributes, so do that. And like the preceding ones, uh, this uh, works only if you can wrap in the first place, and also it works on any element. So, but let's, let, let's look at what it does, even if it's not primarily focused on English. So here's a short Japanese piece of text that says something like, there will be a discount campaign in between October and November 2019. Uh, as you can see, we can wrap between all letters in this first example, and, and we have a colon at the beginning of a line. That's not very nice. Like if you think about how English is, you have a word, a column, a space, and then another word, thanks to the space we would wrap after the column, not before. And, and here it's at the beginning, it's not so nice. Same for the tilde sign, a Japanese you commonly uses this to mean from nine to 10, like nine to the 10 is from nine to 10. The fact that you have a line wrap in the middle of this is not very nice. And so if you go in increasing order of line breaking strictness, here we say, no, 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 no. Columns at the beginning of a line is terrible. Take the last letter on the previous line and bring it down with me so that I don't start the line with a column. And if you go from normal to strict, you do even more and say, well, you know, this is not nice either. I want the beginning and the end of the range around my tilde sign. So this is the increasing strictness uh, of this property. Um, why don't you always use the strict one? Well, maybe most of the time it's nice, but if you're in very narrow things, uh, I don't know, the caption of a figure, a column of a newspaper, this excessive strictness may leave a lot of white space at the end of your lines, and that's not ideal. So uh, for those of you who design Japanese newspapers, uh, maybe you will uh, use this property. Uh, maybe not everyone will. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Earlier I said, English wraps at spaces, Japanese wraps between letters. How does the browser know to do that? I also say it doesn't wrap between this Japanese letter and this Japanese comma. Yeah, how does the browser know how to do that? Thanks to Unicode. I'm sure all of you know that Unicode associates characters with a code point, and that's how we classify all the visible characters in all human languages that can, we can display on the web. But Unicode does more than that. Not only does it list these things, it categorizes them. And it, can, it does so for a number of purposes. But today, the one that interests us is that for each of the categories it creates, it associates behavior. And 
we care about line breaking behavior. Uh, this line breaking behavior categorization is described in a document called Unicode Standard Annex number 14. There's a link here. And this gives a bunch of categories of Unicode characters with line breaking characteristics associated with each group. Uh, maybe we can have a look at a couple of examples. The letter A with code point uh, 41 is in the category alphabetic. And naturally, alphabetic letters do not have built-in wrapping opportunities. They don't suppress them either, they just don't have any. A space, on the other hand, is in its own category, which is called the space category, and that this one does have a wrapping opportunity at the end of itself. And so we get what I've been showing you since earlier. No wrapping opportunities around the letters except when there's a space putting one after itself. If we look at the Japanese example, most of the letters in that line are not alphabetic letters, they're ideographic letters. And Unicode has a category for that. And ideographic letters are allowed to wrap before and after themselves. But Closing punctuations like a Japanese comma, a Japanese period, a closing parenthesis will stay with the character before them even if that one would have a wrapping opportunity around itself. And so, between each pair of Japanese letters we have this wrapping opportunity except before the closing punctuation that wants to stay with its previous neighbor. And so I encourage you to go look at this Unicode Annex 14 because it has a number of interesting categories, not all of which are about langu languages you don't commonly use. Um, there are variations on common characters with different line-breaking characteristics that we can use to good effect to set up our documents so that by default the wrapping opportunities are in the right place or are not in the wrong place. If you write a piece of text that is talking about cats, you have a number, you have a word, the fact there is a normal space between these things, everything is fine, it will wrap after the space. But if you're writing about time, and you write 3 p.m., you don't want the p.m. to go on the next line and the 3 to stay on the end of the line. So you can choose between using a space or a non-breaking space, uh, which also has an HTML entity for convenience, but the magic of this is routing in Unicode. Similarly, if you put an M dash in your text, uh, many people put no space at all around an M dash, but some find that a bit too tightly packed, and you can use the Unicode thin space to, to space it a little bit from the text around it. A thin space, just like a space, has a wrapping opportunity after it, which is fine in this situation. But if you're always using another kind of thin spaces to separate a paragraph sign from the number of the paragraph next to it. You don't want the line to end in the paragraph sign and the next line to start with 3.2. So here, you want to use a narrow, non-breaking space. Some more variations. Front end, there's a hyphen. The hyphen has a wrapping opportunity after it. And that's what we want. But in email, you probably don't want the line to end in e dash and the next line start starting with mail, that's not so nice. So in that situation, you can pick a non-breaking hyphen. And if you go look in Unicode's Unicode Annex 14, there are many more of these that suppress or introduce or stay neutral to wrapping opportunities so that you can set up your markup just right. Okay, a couple more examples, combining a few of the things we've seen so far. So if we line break absolutely anywhere and break spaces, which is, if you remember, the white space break space version cons conserves everything, the, line, the spaces, the tabs, the line feeds, everything is there, and you can wrap within the tabs. What kind of behavior do you get with this? Uh, you get the Unix terminal behavior. Everything you type stays there. Lines wrap everywhere. If this is the kind of behavior you want to display in your page, this combination of value will do it. Here is another thing, and you're probably picking a theme some here that these properties relate strongly to internationalization. As I've discussed earlier, normally Japanese breaks between every letter. 
and for flow text, for body text. This is generally what people want. But in some small controlled situation, this is actually not so nice. If you have a title, a, a small caption, a figure caption, or something like this, it can be nice to actually keep the letters of a word together and allow the wrapping between the words. Well, where is between the words? Well, you can use the word break, WBR, HTML element, to signal that, or equivalently, the Unicode zero width space. And if you just do that, it doesn't actually change anything, because in the first place, we were already allowed to wrap anywhere in Japanese, so adding an explicit uh, wrapping opportunity in the middle of it does nothing. Well, it does nothing unless you use word break keep all to keep all the letters of a word together, and then you will only be allowed to wrap at the explicit opportunity. And so now my pictures are large, but if I shrink it on the naive example on the left, it would shrink anywhere. On the right one, it keeps the words together. And for those who read Japanese, that's actually quite a bit nicer. Let's look at a tricky case. Atomic inlines. No, not this kind of atomic. Uh, what is an atomic inline? There's a thing that you cannot split. A button, a checkbox, an image, a video element, uh, the canvas element, or anything you put display inline block on it. This element itself won't be split at the end of the line. This is why we call them atomic inlines. And so for atomic inlines, they all have a wrapping opportunity before them and after them. And not only do they have that, they will also still have a wrapping opportunity if you put a non-breaking space in the right next to them. This is probably not very useful behavior. Like the fact that there is a wrapping opportunity is nice. The fact that you can't suppress it is less nice, but it's required for web compatibility. It has been like this for several decades now. Uh, there is a large amount of content that depends on buttons wrapping after non-breaking spaces. Even if you think this isn't nice, it will stay this way. But in the cases where you're okay with it, fine. If you're not, what do we do? Here is an example of a case where we would want something else. You probably have seen this design pattern in a bunch of places. If you have a link that links to outside of your website, there's a little icon next to it. And so you have spaces with wrapping opportunities after the spaces, and this means that your little icon might, might go to the next line separately from your link, losing the expressiveness that it has. So how do we suppress this? The white space property is not going to help us. The icon is separate from the link. Uh, we don't want to suppress wrapping on the entire paragraph, so white space is not going to help. Keep all, maybe? Well, no, that's about letters in the word. This is not the case here, either. Overflow wrap, there's no case of overflow. We can't use all, all of these properties. But aha, I know Unicode. I'm going to use a non-breaking space. And it still doesn't work, because atomic inlines have their own enforced wrapping opportunity, regardless of what you put next to them. So this is not nice. What can we do? Uh, if you have a time machine, and you go into the future and pick at properties from CSS level 4, you can say wrap before, avoid on the image, and it does exactly what you want. This is from the future. You cannot use this today, so we're still sad. <laughs> um, if you wish to not be sad uh, and also don't plan on inventing a time machine, uh, I recommend that you go complain to browsers or encourage them to support this because it probably would be useful. Uh, level 4 comes with the uh, alternative of wrap after a void for different situations. It also has a wrap inside a void. I'm not going to get too far into this because uh, so far this is science fiction. Uh, but if you like this, go, go tell the browsers that they, they should work on time machines. Uh, but for those of us who live in the present, uh, we can do something. It's a bit ugly, but you put your image and the space before it in a span. And now if you say no wrap on this combination of an image and a space, then you suppress the wrapping opportunities between the two. And that will get you the behavior you wanted. Uh, so the behavior is possible. The markup is less than ideal. I don't know. 
how you happy or you sad it depends on how you're feeling that day um, okay other than science fiction can we use all the stuff I just talked about well yeah mostly uh, and as Rachel has said earlier we, we have a system now we need to understand the system uh, think about what we want to do, reach for the tools that are supposed to be for that purpose. And then when something is missing in the browser, at least we know what we're trying to do and we can like, look for alternatives rather than think about this as a pile of hacks we copy and paste whenever they work. So let's look at the cases where they might not work. White space, is everything fine? Well, partly. The break spaces value is fairly new. It's not available in Edge HTML. It has been implemented in both Chrome and Safari, but have not reached the stable version yet. They will very soon. And Firefox is working on implementing it. So soon you will be able to use Breakspaces. If you remember, Breakspaces is very similar to Prewrap. The only difference is what happens to a series of space at the end of the line. Can you break between them or not? So. If what break spaces is really what you want, but it's not available, pre-wrap is probably an okay fallback. Uh, another thing that is a little bit annoying is that there is no consistency between browsers about what they do with the spaces at the end of the line with pre-wrap. Some of them truncate at the content edge. Some of them let them overflow. Uh, so far, there's no consistency. Overflowing is generally considered to be nicer because your spaces don't disappear. You can go into them if you're editing. You can understand what's going on. But there's no <laughs> universal agreement, so that, that's a little bit less than ideal. Overflow wrap. Can we use this? Yes, but. This used to have a different name, and, the, and that name was word wrap. Uh, the CSS working group uh, having heard feedback from many, many people, figured out that nobody could ever remember what this name was supposed to be doing, especially given that the only value available initially was normal and break word. And overflow wrap anywhere is fairly easy to remember that in case of overflow, you can wrap anywhere. But word wrap break word is kind of harder to know what it's about. Uh, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari have both property names supported, use whichever you want. Uh, Edge only has the legacy one, and given the development of Edge these days, uh, might not change, or it will change when it switched to Chrome. So there you have it. The anywhere value is also new. Uh, Firefox has it. Edge won't. Uh, Chrome and Safari, I think it's in under development in Chrome, but uh, it hasn't shipped yet. There is an alternative, though. For some reason, uh, sometimes in the, in the mid-2000s, uh, WebKit engineers figured out that saying word break break word was a good way to say, in case of overflow, you can wrap anywhere. Uh, and so the word break property that is supposed to be about letting you keep all or break all the letters of a word has an extra keyword, which does exactly the same thing as overflow wrap anywhere. Um, you can use that. If you think it's ugly, put pressure on them to implement it with the correct name. Hyphens. OK, how about this one? It works in Firefox perfectly. It works in Safari and Edge with a prefix. It works in Chrome if you don't use Windows or Linux. Um, <laughs> uh, possibly you might want to find some Google person and tell them about that. Uh, that's for the auto value, though. For the uh, manual value, it does work. Word break. OK, uh, Chrome and Edge do it right. So it's not always the same browsers that have problems. Uh, in Safari, uh, it's too aggressive. Not only does it break between all the letters of the word or keep all the letters of a word together, it does it for all the characters. And so it will also introduce or suppress wrapping opportunities around punctuation making it not useful for its intended purpose. But it does make it into a useful substitute for line break anywhere until that ships. In Firefox, it's somewhere in between, between good and not. Uh, when you break all, it will correctly break between all the letters of the word and not between letters and punctuation. 
If you try and keep all, it will keep too much and will suppress the wrapping opportunities of punctuation as well. Uh, they're aware of it. I hope a fix is coming, but it hasn't arrived yet. Line break. Okay, what about this one? Uh, Chrome, Safari, and Edge for the CJK focused values, they all work. Firefox has none of them, but they're working on all of them and it will ship soon. Chrome and Safari have implemented the line break anywhere uh, variant that lets you break between every single letter, uh, but only in, in uh, developer builds so far, uh, in release builds. It's supposed to happen soon. And line break anywhere is not a thing in Edge. Okay, uh, so what can you do if you want to use line break anywhere and you don't have it? Well, the word break break all, as I discussed, is different because of what it does or doesn't do around punctuation, but it's kind of close. So as an approximation of line break anywhere, using word break break all may do what you want if, if you're in that situation. So here is our little <laughs> word cloud from the beginning. Uh, I hope that now you see that even though the naming is somewhat funny, there actually is a system behind this that uh, there are different tools to reach for in different situations. They mostly work with some caveats that can be worked around. And uh, I hope now this is a usable system for you all. Thank you. Excellent talk, Florian. So I've just got a few questions before the break here. First up, question from Christian. Uh, has anyone ever brought up a CSS property that does what widows and orphans do, but for hyphenation, only breaking if there's, if it leaves, doesn't leave too few letters on the uh, line or something? Yes, uh, there are in CSS text level four, a number of uh, property that relates to advanced control about hyphenation. It lets you control this, it lets you control uh, how much space must there be at the end of the line before you start hyphenating. If it's not that different, maybe you should keep the word entirely together. Uh, there are a number of controls there. Uh, they've been discussed. The design seems reasonable on the face of it, but maybe because three, uh, two of four browsers are still hyphenated and one of four hasn't made it work on all operating systems yet, uh, implementations haven't looked at these advanced control yet. Uh, if you're using CSS for print, making actual books of paper, which a number of people do, the non-browser implementations of CSS tend to have better support for this kind of thing. Uh, but in the mainstream web, uh, this is also one of the things you need a time machine for. Okay, uh, that's unfortunate, but no, happens to a lot of my things. Um, another question real quick. So hyphenation, automatic hyphenation using a dictionary, means a lot of lookups about stuff to read up there's a lot of letter, uh, words in languages generally. Do you know if this like, uh, slows things down from normal rendering very much? So for the last eight years, I have not programmed browsers. <laughs> I've only programmed browser engineers by writing specifications. Uh, and so the performance of browsers is not exactly uh, my area of expertise. I think it's reasonably okay, like the, working about the glyph shapes and the visual aspects of it is significantly slower than doing dictionary lookups. Uh, but I may be wrong about this. I, I don't believe hyphenation is a performance problem. Yeah, and I believe a lot of it's copied over or similar ideas from uh, old tech-based layout stuff too. So at least the code's old and proven for a lot of these things, I believe. Be good. And, oh, my phone went down. Here we go. Um, so, regarding several of the properties depend on the language. Uh, normally, we set the language on the HTML element. Is it okay to set the L language in multiple places in the document? Does that affect things uh, differently as we set it differently on the different elements? Yes, you should set the language whenever you're switching the language. If you're using a loan word uh, in, in the middle of an English sentence and uh, there's just a word that has become English but originally wasn't, that doesn't need to be language tagged. But if you have a quotation in another language in the middle of a document, if you have um, 
a website with uh, user contributed content and the language of the website is different from the language of the user. You should absolutely mark it up with the right language. Any time within your DOM tree where you're switching from one language with, to another. Uh, this affects the properties I've talked about, but it affects more than this. It affects the default choice of font in the browser. It, it relates to many different parts of the language, uh, and maybe speech synthesis also, if you're using some assist, assistive tools to read the page up to you. You don't want the Dutch part to be read as if it was English. Uh, maybe some of you have tried that with Google Maps while walking around the city. It's not <laughs> ideal. Uh, so yes, put your lang tag everywhere you can. Uh, it can only make things better. Cool. And final thing, uh, your example about, I suspect this is going to be a time machine answer, but uh, your example about uh, external link and images and making them break in an appropriate way. The current markup you had for that involves putting extra spans around stuff. Is there any way to make that work when you're using pseudo elements, just putting a, a colon colon after on the A to render the image? Yes, so uh, this actually is easier in that case. I, I use the markup example because this is not limited to links and, and little logos after them. The same problem after happens with buttons and anything that can be in line next to the content around it. If you're actually inserting your image in the link with a column, column after, you can insert a space and an image and put uh, white space no wrap on that combination. That's right, okay. Cool, thank you. All right, everybody.